there she is. You have a bunch of new puppies and stuff. How many so far? Eleven, but one just died in the van. Mm -hmm. Now, do we do we know the gentleman in the baseball? Yeah, you got your. Are you calling us order? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll call the yeah, I will go ahead and call the select board meeting to order. First order of business is organization of the board. I make a motion um, to, well, I'm nominating Eric to be chair of the select board. I'll second. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that's good. No, second's good. There you go. Anybody else? You want to nominate somebody? Nope. <laughs> as as is the tradition. Yeah, no, exactly. I think it's a good tradition to doubt. It is. To yeah, good vote. tradition. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Should we vote? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> Carrie, it's your meeting here. Okay. All right, so the rest of the organization, um, same board as last year. So I guess next would be a uh, vice chair. The nominations and discussion for a vice chair for the year. Is there anyone who would like to be vice chair this year? I nominate John. See, I'm really good at that. I'll second. Is that, do you second the nomination? Or am I just like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. However, I would like to ask John, is this something you need to be? I can do that. Okay. He's planning on being out 11 out of 12 months of the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Okay. Um, right, so, John is by Chair Oliver. Aye. 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 Opposed? Detentions? Okay. Um, so, we have those two. Do we have to do them individually or can we sort of discuss a slate and then vote on a slate as one? I think motion to vote on a slate. Okay, I think that'll speed us up a little bit. Yep. Um, all right, so we'll just run down the list. So budget committee, I think John did a great job the last couple of years. And I would like to continue doing that. I, I think it's gonna be a complicated one this year, but I, I'm ready for it. There you go. Oh. Okay. Uh, so CIP. I'd like to do it again. That's okay. Um, we have heritage. So starting in January, um, my work is gonna uh, make me a big forty-five minutes late meeting. Okay. <laughs> Starting next January or starting? Starting this past right, January. So already. Mm -hmm. right. but yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Change the meeting. That is an option. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's nothing sacrosanct about day or time. Is that done? Absolutely. Absolutely. We changed the budget meeting, as a matter of fact, a year ago because of Dimitri's options. Mm -hmm. So I could uh, discuss it with. Um, and I can do that, that, but you have that prerogative, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And then if it's not going to work, you can come back to us and mm -hmm. we can discuss our right. Okay. I'll, I think that makes a lot of sense. I'll okay. put it out there. Thank okay. you. Okay. 
I was the planning board last year. I am interested in continuing that. So I, I do have a suggestion. The planning board is likely to have some fairly significant um, hearings this year, and I think that we should designate an alternate to the planning board in the event that I'm out of town or unable to attend, that they could still have a full slate of people at the hearing. I, I spent, uh, I don't know, 10 years with the planning board, yeah. mm -hmm. and I'd be happy to do that. Is, is there anything wrong with us putting an alternate? <laughs> no, I don't believe there is. I think you probably should. Yeah, I think I think having an alternate to the planning board makes a lot of sense this year. I agree. Okay. Yeah, thinking of alternates, I'd like to be John's alternate on the budget committee. I'll attend, but I'd like to be an alternate if he can't make a meeting. Yeah, because you, you're there anyway, always. I'm going to attend. I have to anyway. look and see if we Yeah, that one might be that. Different. Oh, there may not be. The planning board in statute has an alternate. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. Which I don't know that the budget. Yeah. Committee does. I, I don't think the budget committee does, but it's been like two or three years since I read through that. Mm -hmm. What if um, we come to an understanding that if it's not allowable, though, Tracy will help by giving us the report and. You know, the report back. If for some reason John isn't available to do it, certainly I can do that. Because then we get the communication piece. <laughs> Yeah, we yeah. can absolutely do that. I mean, so. yeah. If you can't vote, you can't vote. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, but the planning board does have that in their yeah. enabling legislation. So. Um, and then we get the, so those are the required mm -hmm. ones. Mm -hmm. And we have a new one that she, the community nursing, <laughs> conservation, energy, um, the Johnson Drive is ended, so we don't need one there. Uh, the Mascoma Lakeside Park, the Methodist Hill has provided their report. We don't need one there. Uh, the MPAC, uh, the Old Home Days, Recreation, and the TIF. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, Katie did conservation, Tracy did energy. I did TIF. Well, actually, I guess I would. Wasn't necessarily officially a select board rep, but I'm on the. You're the resident. As a resident. Um, I'm happy to do conservation again, unless someone wants to. We have some projects going on. Yep. I'm happy to continue energy and also be part of the MFAC. Okay. If you want someone on community nursing, I'd love to be a part of that. Yeah. What was it? Was the structure of the committee? Did we use the one or did we use the town? We didn't, but she could always attempt yeah. to communicate back. And yeah, it's fun too. Let me see. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm not sure there's a voting spot on there. We'd have to check how we incorporate it. But, it. but if you were interested in attending and reporting back to us, that would be excellent. Well, and it is your committee. So if you want a voting vote, yeah. we can always change that. We can, but, <laughs> but for tonight, we're not going to go down that route. But Emily's still going to be. Yeah. Emily's yeah. on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, no, I don't see any issues with the committee as yeah. does. This mm -hmm. is going to be a big year for them, and having some mm -hmm. communication mm -hmm. back, I think, makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. yep. Also, Eva's not on here, but I do provide a report right. from them. Yeah, which is. Which is but they are not a town committee, which is no. why they did not come up here. But I wouldn't mind a brief touch on it. Yeah. When awesome. you have something to tell us. Yeah, we'll just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I've noted down for our slate is uh, John is vice chair, budget committee, John, CIP, Tracy, Heritage, Alice, planning board, Eric, alternate, John, Community Nursing Alice will be a liaison, if not a voting member. Conservation, Kate, Energy, um, Tracy, and MPAC, Tracy, uh, as far as the town committee still. So I'd entertain a motion to uh, appoint each of us as listed. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? <laughs> okay. We are organized for the year. All right, next up, uh, minutes of March 4th, regular and non public. I make a motion to approve as printed. I'll second that. 
comments or corrections? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Al abstains. Me. Al and yep. And just uh, to be clear, we're making the non-public minutes public. Yeah. For, we're right. not. We're not sealing them. We're not sealing the minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Board reports. Let's uh, run down. The road. Kate, I'll make you go first. I knew it. Don't worry. I, I won't do it every time. <laughs> um, yeah. So conservation commission did meet the first Thursday of the month. Um, not a whole lot in terms of projects. Um, just some reports back and kind of recalibrating. Um, did not meet the prior month and I was not there in January. So looking um, and talking about stormwater and what folks want to focus on going forward, most of the meeting was spent working with the folks on master plan part two, um, see up on the board. So uh, that was the majority of the meeting in terms mm. of content. But other than that, not new plan on other projects. Energy, I won't uh, repeat. Of course, we had a meeting with them both at town meeting and even at our last select board meeting, so we have nothing new since then. We won't meet again until the end of this month. Okay. I think we all heard the results of the budget committee's meetings over the years, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm looking forward to the next year. Um, Eva hasn't met yet this month. They're meeting tomorrow, and I couldn't be at the Heritage Commission. Okay. Uh, the planning board did have uh, a meeting where the uh, Whitney Hall project and the public safety building had their public hearings. There's some good feedback uh, for the plans, particularly around some of the outdoor lighting and um, the stormwater from Whitney Hall is not changing at all, but they found some new things. So there's some discussion around ideas for that. Uh, all right, uh, next town manager's report. All right, on staff report, there's really not much to report. We still have the two open positions in the police department, one police officer and one police assistant. Um, as we told you before, we're continuing to keep the police officer position open and looking, but we don't have any plans of filling that until June of this year. So we'll, we'll continue watching that. Um, the only thing that really might change that is if there's a certified officer that comes to the door, then we'll We'll look at that and make decisions when that happens. Um, town meeting, even though we'll be discussing this a little bit more in depth later in the agenda, I would like to just take a moment and thank everybody who worked hard to make this year's town meeting a success. It takes a lot of coordination from multiple staff and many volunteers, and just a big thank you. Um, I also want to thank Lindsay Smith for all her work and preparation for both the election day and meeting day. They were coordinated well, and I think things went well. Mm -hmm. With that update on Whitney Hall and Public Safety Building, um, Whitney Hall and demonstration or demolition and excavation still are going well. Um, the footings and foundation walls are completed. If you go by there, you can see those, and they're beginning to prepare for plumbing openings in the foundation walls before backfilling. We do expect the foundation to be completed by the end of the month and ready for framing in early April. So exciting that that's moving along. Um, public safety building continues to work through the final budgeting phases um, with a goal of breaking ground in May. Many of the RFPs for subcontractors are open at this time. I did talk to an excavation contractor that had gotten the site work plan. So it's nice to see those out on the street and we're we're excited to see what those final numbers come back looking like. Um, as Eric mentioned, both site plans were reviewed at the March 13th planning board meeting. And as he said, they were good discussions. Both plans were approved, but there were some, some good recommendations and discussions on lighting storm water and a few of those things that we will, we've actually already worked on them and done some of the, the items. Mm -hmm. um, Shed Street, I'm happy to announce finally that tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, they're going to start the final demolition of the or demolition of the final building. And then they're going to be working on um, grading the site and preparing it for us to sell it. So that should be done 
I'd say within the next couple of weeks total, hopefully by the end of this week, but it might take a couple of weeks to get it all sorted out. Um, with that, we'll be talking tonight about some priorities that the board might want to see as we move forward with selling that property. Um, I did send you an email last week, but wanted to update publicly that um, we've got a new ambulance. Um, uh, in January 2023, the select board awarded the bid for the ambulance in the amount of $265,367, which was a little bit more than the CIP had planned and approved, but we moved forward with that. Um, Richard Martin and I scoured the bid documents that we got back even after the award, found a few changes, and we were able to sign a contract for $256,889. We did receive a call earlier this month that there was a demo ambulance available with 2,200 miles on it. Um, and right now, if we were not to accept that, our ambulance was about one and a half years out still. Um, looking at that, we were able to, to agree to a purchase price of 251,218, which was about 5,000 less than the CIP plan had approved. So. I just wanted to let you guys know we approved that contract. The ambulance actually was delivered last week, and it was nice to be able to, to get a really nice ambulance, which was exactly the same thing that we had ordered for less than we attended. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. Have we traded in our old ambulance yet? It's part of that deal. Yeah. But I remember that. we haven't given it to them because we'll be, we have to get some radios put in and lettering put on the ambulance. <laughs> equipment swap so they're more than happy to let us have both of them while we're making that transition and then we'll get it delivered back to them great a so, little bit of update on dpw um you guys may have noticed most of the frost is out of the ground the uh, roads are starting to dry up and our roads came through mud season in pretty good shape we had our share of washboard areas from the freezing and thawing, but overall we didn't have any major serious mud issues in town. Um, <clears throat> we were slightly under for this winter on salt and sand usage, and we are quite a bit lower on liquid usage um, than we normally are. So that's a that's good news for the town and early indication point that we'll be able to lift the road postings earlier than normal. So continue to work on that. Um, with the less than normal winter conditions, highway crews covered over 32 lane miles of tree trimming. This is necessary to keep growth out of the ditches, keep vegetation from hitting vehicles, and allowing the sunlight to quickly thaw and dry out the road surfaces. So I want to thank them for continuing to work hard even when they didn't have the winter maintenance to do. I think the condition of the roads right now is a testament to the good job they've done. I know there's some neighboring towns that are quagmires. Yeah. No, they've been working really hard to keep them in good condition. And um, DPW also hosted two water training classes last month, put on by Grand State Rural Water, Rural water Association. The first was water distribution best practices, and the second was topics of cyanobacteria. They were attended by four Enfield staff members, including the health officer. And then highway staff right now are working on RFPs for the plow truck, the sidewalk tractor, and the 2024 paving. So they continue to work hard in DPW. And that's what I have for a staff report. Thank you. Okay. Any questions for? Yeah. All right. Um, on to the business. We have quite a bit on tonight, uh, starting with the Johnston Drive property discussion. Uh, so we received the legal opinion back. Would you like to provide a summary of that was? Yeah, um, pretty basic summary was overall what the Johnston Property Committee recommended. Um, fits within the legal parameters and within the deeds that they were able to title search. You know, the road access issue, as long as it's kept to minimal use, the attorney felt that that was, that was okay. He did say it would probably be a problem if we were trying to make it into a, a full-fledged beach with large public parking, but the few 
handicap accessible parking places and the service vehicles that would need to come in and out. Mm -hmm. He said that probably would not be any more than any normal residential. So mm -hmm. he was was pretty okay with that and thought that the the minimal use and just keeping that for open public access from the rail trail walk in bike in was was a use that would be within the realm of what the title said. Okay. Um, so I guess we have that opinion now so we can discuss what we want to move forward with. First question, well, I guess there's a couple questions. One is to move forward with the recommendation of the committee, which was to sell one of the lots, the little tiny lot in the corner now, and then maintain the two lots as sort of as is. Um, and then the third lot stays in its current status until the um, the lease on that is and is reverts back to the town. Now, which which do you identify as the third lot? Oh, the the, one the first. Uh, number six is the one that would sell. Yeah. Five and four would remain as they currently are. Mm -hmm. And three would also remain as it is, but that's the one that currently has a lease that still has a lease. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, so that we can't change that one now. Yeah. Gotcha. That's a beautiful lot. The whole property is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I think my personal opinion is that we go with the recommendation from the committee and I'd like to see the lot um, six the little triangle be offered up for a public sale. I know there's a right of first refusal, but I think that makes sense in keeping with the recommendations of the committee and it's an immediate item that we can take action on. I, I tend to agree I with that. Question. I think we have a committee that has worked very hard. Uh, they have talked to many different people um they presented a, i think a very balanced plan and I, I think this is the way to go i i do think that you know this may be the last piece of property that will ever become available to the town on mascoma lake and i think it would be really silly for us to turn our backs on that you know i'm still cranky that we had the opportunity to buy the big sandy beach from crescent beach hotel or mascoma lake lodge after every building had been removed mm -hmm. <laughs> and the town said no there you go thank you i have a question uh yes go ahead uh, this um first right of refusal to buy lot six um is that a some kind of quid pro quo deal you made with a resident that takes it away from other public uh offers <laughs> How is that legal? I'm not sure. It was a it was a land trade that was done legally. The town got some land in exchange for the first right of refusal. So the town has the first right of refusal. No. Uh, uh, an individual has the first right of refusal. Yes. OK, well, I'll be looking into that. But I like the fact that it's going to public offer. That'd be great. I don't see how one person has first right legally. It's a pretty standard real estate practice. Yeah. What uh, land did the town get in exchange for the right of production? The parking lot across from Pigeon 56. Okay. It was just a braille trail and mm -hmm. a little kiosk and a sign. I'm in favor of it with a couple of notations that I'm sure you'll make when the time comes to do the. <laughs> All right. Um, I'd like all legal expenses to be paid by the purchaser. Um, I'd like the clarification of access and parking to be a part of the sale so that we're not responsible for them using the right of way and that they're not going to be allowed to use the limited handicap parking. Uh, I'd like a survey, which will be required, of course, to be paid by the purchaser. Um, and that the purchaser will not have any privileges particular to the land other than those that are available to any other resident of Enfield. You mean the adjoining land? Or? Correct. You don't, right. Because the purchaser may be a resident, but who knows, may not be a resident. Anything else, Tracy? 
um, other particulars that have to do with the property itself, but aren't particular to the thought of selling six. Mm -hmm. Alice, do you have? Um, no, as part of the committee. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so for that piece, it sounds like there's general agreement to investigate what a sale would look like. I think Tracy put forth some some new few codicils. Yeah, no, a few reasonable. I'll do that, and yeah. I do have the letter for first driver review, yeah. and I will get. Yeah, I, I'll get a legal opinion on that before we. Right. Yeah. But I just want to make sure we do that right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I absolutely. Think we, I think we'd want to see an RFP before it got released. Yeah. Yeah. I will bring one. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments on that particular thing from the public? I'm just on your comment about um, the purchaser of lot six, excuse me, uh, the access. My understanding right now is it would become a landlocked parcel um, if it's sub subdivided off. So their access would be it, it, <clears throat> the same. It's already an independent parcel. There's no subdivision going on. It's right here. <laughs> it, it is listed as a separate parcel. I, I know it was listed on the tax guide, but the deeds don't have it listed as a separate parcel. They all used the standard railroad release deed, but there is an individual uh, property description for that property. It's just not on the site, I know. Okay. Uh, so I'm just curious how the access would be then. The uh, same as you or I, which would be, unless we're in a handicapped vehicle, yeah, we're going to yeah, walk or we're going to bike. And that, I just wanted to clarify what and, I thought and, I heard. And that's what that's the one of the conditions Tracy's saying to put yeah. on it is they don't get special access to the rest of the land, meaning they don't get extra parking. Yeah. Yes, Jean. Um, I, I just want to commend everybody for working on that. And I think it sounds like it's a great plan. I just want to get some clarity and kind of the thought process. So you're saying that the person that owned the parking lot across from 56 that owned that, that's the person that has first refusal on this piece of property? That's, that's my understanding as I read through the document okay. is that right. when they gave the town the property for the parking lot, the town gave them a right of first refusal. Okay. Which I'm does not. I just yeah. want to make sure that's. But part of why it will go out to for public bid is to make sure the town gets the best price. Mm -hmm. And if they choose to match that, they have that right. Okay. All right. Thank you. This gave patents. So when we did Lakeside Park, <laughs> we was were not allowed to put trucks across the rail trail or the fiber optics. Mm -hmm. So have has like board thought about how they're going to get the true I think it's true buildings demolished. Also, I would assume the town is going to mow it. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be some traffic that's all been mm -hmm. considered. Well, I think that's a good transition to the next decision we have to make is what to do with those buildings, whether to board them up or have them removed. Uh, my view would be we'd want to see the proposal again for that one cost wise and also the issue Steve brings up will potentially have a big impact on cost. They can only take up. But the legal opinion allowed uh, said that occasional maintenance vehicles yeah. could be well, part and parcel. But Steve's asking a separate question. Yeah. No, Which, that's what I'm saying. I think right. that should be deferred as well. I was going to say I, I agree with him. If we're going to take a dump truck or something across there, we'll get that. We'll get yeah. that opinion. We'll talk to DOT and APA yeah. and yeah. make sure that it's right. That's right. But for the, the mowers, correct me if I'm wrong, it's just a pickup truck with a trailer with a mower. Right. There's a road over there for right. regular vehicle traffic yeah. to access their cabin right. down the way. So those smaller, lighter vehicles can access back right. and forth. But a, a heavier vehicle with right. a load will want to make sure we yeah. it's protected. I wouldn't right. think those buildings are so substantial that they couldn't be taken down in smaller pieces, but we'll find out. We'll look and see. Yeah. Well, so <laughs> we don't say that on video. <laughs> I can. I can. We don't need to call it by a trade. There's a link. There is a question. Oh, right. yes. Uh, Barbara. Um, am I on? 
Yes, Barbara Jones is on. I have to say, I totally support the recommendation. I thought the committee did a fantastic job. I don't have any complaints about that whatsoever. And um, I thought Nate did a great job. Um, my one question, and the audio is not that great here. My one question is, after all of the kerfuffle about getting down there, um, the road, which is mainly on my property, but that's beside the point, the road has been destroyed. Um, and if you, I have two questions about that. If this person is the, a mythical person who is not an abutter, um, chooses to use that property, what, how, how do we um, manage having people come and go daily, back and forth? That's one question. And my other question is, um, I mean, I, I think the road is going to basically be breaking people's axles at some point. So if you're bringing these trucks back and forth, there has to be some kind of maintenance, not the kind of maintenance that would steal the property, but some kind of maintenance on that road to make it usable. Okay. I, I will stand here and say, I, it, but I, I do recommend that we just put some gravel in that, yeah. that area. You know, we have, we have four of those parcels, so we're we're partially right. responsible for that road as well. I also Thank think you. Uh, I appreciate you're saying that. I think on uh, the gravel, I think um, the big benefit to me, I mean, the gravel isn't just maintaining people's vehicles; it's also the safety of the lake because right now it's kind of washed down and it's silting into the lake, which we know contributes to the problem. So I think just as a general practice, making sure that it's got a good bed on it so that we don't make the lake worse. But I am, and Barbara also, are, we're both aware that if um, you start maintaining that road, you could acquire that land, which we do not want to have happen. Um, <laughs> but just for the safety of your own vehicles yeah. at this point. It doesn't work that way, but we'll... <laughs> it doesn't work. I, I was sticking to the topic at hand, which is the sale of six. And then I thought we'd get into the overall That's, property a right. little bit. Yeah. I think there was consensus on the sale of six that we'd like to see an RFP brought forward. It would go to public bid. And can we do that as a motion? Sure. Would you like to make a motion? Sure. I'd like to see an RFP for the sale of uh, lot six, uh, which we would review and um, incorporate some of the points that I made if the group agrees with those. Um, and then um, we will deal with that accordingly. Uh, certainly, I would expect that the minimum bid would be no less than the assessed price of the property. You guys can decide when it comes in if you're going willing to sell it for whatever bid comes in. Yeah. I wouldn't put that in the offer. Yeah, I don't think that should be in the motion. Or okay, the fair enough. The, the, the assessment of bids is a independent action. Okay, fair enough. So that's my motion. Second. I'll second. A okay, discussion of the motion on the table. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We'll see an RFP at a mm -hmm. future date. Okay, so now we will continue the transition to lots four and five, which are the two lots that are currently under the town's full control that have the open space and are being mowed. They have the issue that uh, Steve Patton brought up, mm -hmm. which we'll be cognizant of. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I just want to yeah. kind of reiterate, I think, where you were going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My recommendation would be that we overly secure the buildings that are down there now. Mm -hmm. And I have asked the police chief already to kind of monitor use mm -hmm. before we put a lot of money into mm -hmm fixing those or tearing those buildings down or doing anything. If it's very, very little use out there, I think it's worth the select board rediscussing whether they want to take the buildings down or not and if they're going to keep those parcels open in the way they are or what they want to do. So yeah, now if they're if they're secure and safe, is that a safety hazard? I'm comfortable with that. I, I like the word over secure because uh, as Kate and I both know, uh the locks don't work. Yeah. 
Um, the door was open when I was down there. And it was too. open when I was down there, so. too. Um, a couple of things I would mention. I'd like to see the um, couple of spots for potential handicap parking not be developed at all, but be roped off with a sign that says handicap parking only um, right at the beginning of the property so that someone who goes down there and doesn't even go past the rail trip, that's their problem for getting out. We can't put a sign at the head of the road. We don't own anything on this side of the rail trip. No, no, I didn't mean on this side. I meant at the top of our, the town's parcel of the property. No, I do think we're going to make a little area there and then put some no parking signs. I just didn't want to, I don't see any need to gravel it off or any of that. Just It's strictly handicap and seasonal and a sign that says handicap parking only. And then my other point being, I'd like to see an annual review of the property use each September by public hearing so that people can have a way in on the use of the property and how did it go for the summer? And um, we can talk about it at that point. Going along with the suggestion of the committee that said that we would basically sit on it for two years at least, uh, but I think an annual review makes sense. I wouldn't put September on it. Yeah. Maybe October. It could be a little later, could be through fall foliage or something like that. Uh, but basically, an annual review for the board to gather and have a public hearing on how did it go? Um, I would like to see us really be cognizant of the message we got from town meeting about budgeting and so do the locking, do the gravel and the basics, and then put it, develop what you have for ideas and put it through the budget process so that we're not trying to drive the full train. I mean, I know it will go through operations yeah. and they'll make the proposal, but I'd kind of like to kick it over to budgeting. And maybe there's a grant that comes along and that becomes moot. I don't know, but I guess I don't really, I'm very comfortable with all of these suggestions that the committee made. Mm -hmm. I just think forcing it through in terms of dollars feels uncomfortable. No, and I agree with Tracy, that's kind of what I was saying. Let's watch it for a couple of years and see if it's worth us spending money. Yeah. I do think it makes sense question. to uh, invest in two or three picnic tables. I'm sorry, say that again. Two yeah, picnic tables. What about them? Owned, we should have some down we there. We may have inherited them. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. I, I, I would think we would put up signage about the, the swimming and that you're at your own liability, et cetera. I think a formalized sign that says that is crucial. Uh, the lawyer could weigh in on what it's supposed to say. Of course, yeah. maybe There's we shouldn't no try to micromanage yeah, that. Just so you know, if it, there is. if it is a public parcel and it's open to the public, then we're exempt from liability. Ah, good. So. And we had a proper question from Barbara. Yeah. Yes, I'm wondering about the A-frame. It sounds like you're going to just put a bunch of locks on it and leave it there. Um, what is the purpose of keeping that building? The the, per, the short term purpose would be to see how the park goes without expending town funds for removal prematurely. Well, so you're saying that that building at some point may have some use to you? No, we're saying we don't want to spend money on its removal if the lower cost option is available. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> you either remove it or you don't remove it. So what would be a lower cost option? Burning it down. So <laughs> securing it would be the lower cost option. Well, anyone could break into a building. I, I feel it's a public hazard personally. I, and I think there should be a vote on that. Okay, thank you for your comment. Thank you. Can I just... Um, Put my stake in the ground saying I'd like some friendly signage, please. What, could, you, could you say that a second time? What kind of signage? We can, we can work with her on signage. Friendly. friendly. Okay. Yeah. I, there's there's going to have to be some signage developed, and the town manager will make sure to include you in that conversation. I'd appreciate that because right now it's just kind of nasty negative stuff. So, okay. friendly. Mm -hmm. It's like Lakeside. Mm -hmm. I don't have an objection if it, if you work it out with the residents to have a sign closer to the beginning of the road that says private road as we saw it identified in the legal analysis. 
don't they? they? There is not one there now. No. They do, but we can we can there, work there, on there. There is one there now. Oh, is there one now? It does say private drive, but nobody pays any attention to it, and they do. So continue. an official metal sign, perhaps, would or improve just, yeah. the situation. Yes. I think that would be fine. Or I think walking. We're getting, yeah, we're, we're getting into the weeds. Yes, okay. Yeah. I think we're gotcha. getting a little bit into the, the micromanaging. I think the message for yeah. the town, Fred, is to evaluate securing the buildings, signage. Come up with a you know, with a plan to implement the recommendations of the committee, and you know, with a particular view of the cost of it, and then bring that forward for implementation. Is that a fair summary? Yeah. It is That's a good, good summary. What's that? Uh, yes. oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I just remember I want to ask yeah. something. Uh, will the uh, report from the attorneys be available to the public? No. 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 Legal. So that's a no. That's a no. That's a no. He just said no. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are we allowed to bind a future board potentially on parcel three? Like, or do we just no. leave it I until such time that. and then it comes back? Okay. Yeah. So we can have it in the minutes that are if our intent want. is to honor the recommendation, and that would be there for the record. We wanted to put it in the record that this is what you would recommend doing, mm -hmm. but yeah, the okay. Future board at the I figured we couldn't that. bind them. That's why I asked right. the question. But I think it'd be good to have it in the record that we we do support selling parcel three at such time its yeah. lease expires. Mm -hmm. Do right. we have a question? Yes. Yes, Barbara. Do you have another question, Barbara? Barbara Jones. Okay. <laughs> Yes, this is Barbara, Barbara Jones. Barbara Jones your, hand, your hand is still up. I wanted to give you one last. If you, yes. if you have one. I do have a question. Is there yeah. any way for an official abutter to look at the um, legal re reports since our deeds were the ones that were? It doesn't seem totally. That, that's how the state law for legal opinions works. Okay. <laughs> okay. Unless, unless there's more from the board, we will move on. We got more instructions there. I will say again, thank you to the Johnson Drive Committee. You yeah. did an excellent job. It's been a long slog, yeah. and, uh, and I think we're getting a good outcome from. So. And you guys set the bar for other committees. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next, we move to Methodist Hill property RFP discussion. And um, the only thing here I'll say is we're, you know, we will, we will certainly take comments and listen, but at this point we're evaluating the RFP that's going to be put out, not really rediscussing the committee's work or the past. So happy to listen to people speak, but we would like to keep it germane to the RFP. Um, okay, so Ed put together an RFP for us that basically does what we had suggested at our last meeting. Are there comments from the board? I just will let you know, I got a red line copy from Nate Miller of a couple suggestions. So once the board goes through okay. it, if you guys would like to look at his, we have it ready to pull up. Okay. I have one small um, sort of statement, which is, um, when referring to a potential buyer, I think it might be better to write buyer rather than developer mm -hmm. and change that term okay. because we're not necessarily looking for a developer. We're looking for a buyer. I, I, I was going to make exactly the same point, and I thought in line one where it says developer, perhaps we could change that to developer slash purchaser. I would leave developer out completely and either say purchaser mm -hmm. or buyer. Throughout the document. Or just, yeah. Purchaser and then everywhere that purchaser that. throughout the yeah. document i'm fine with that sure because absolutely the, good the legal point. qualifying language invites qualified people and firms and then when you get the quotes you can when you call it buyer it refers back to that mm -hmm. so that would do that work yeah. for you. are there other comments from the board are we ready to see nate's suggested all right, let's go ahead and see those. Let's 
What's the name of that road? Where are we here? Uh, is that Atherton? This is, the is that Atherton Road? That's Atherton Road. Yeah, that the one that cuts through and yeah, is actually labeled on Lebanon maps as Atherton Road. Yeah. You might have to open it in Word. Yeah, you're going to need to open it in Word and see it. Hopefully we can do that. Yeah, you have to do you have Word and spell that. Is usually the online. If not, we can talk to it. That maybe was one that I had, so I wasn't next to you. Okay, so I think we can go through these relatively quickly. Does anyone, if someone has an objection to one of the red lines, mm -hmm. please speak up. Can you just make it a tiny bit bigger, actually? Um, <laughs> sorry. Well, I'm with you there. To be honest, you're in a browser, so you should be able to oh, yeah. shift and well, I, have, I just start that. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. So the first one is to switch to a maybe, which looks very appropriate. Can you make this uh, a left word meeting box? Yeah. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. the 75 acres seems mm -hmm. reasonable to me. The third one is that would that be separate to the towns? Because that's as an official class six road that's in perpetuity, and unless the town gives it up, the so class six road that's there is transverse to the property and require if you were to maintain it. You have to transverse the entire width of the property to get to the class six road on the Lebanon side. No, but what I'm saying is, is it necessary to put it here since it's already a town class six road? I, I, I guess the same thing. I don't think it is because it's the town's responsibility to do it. I know there was some concern on the other side of the border mm -hmm. on the patch land. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. You could put it in there just to say we are planning on maintaining that. Yeah. So if you want a copy when we're done, you can also get a copy. And, so and you don't have to try to piece it together. And I guess since you're here, Nate, did you, what, what was your thought? My, my, my only, my thought here was just to put it in writing that there's no intention of breaking the town's class six right of way. Um, that, that, that right of way would maintain continuity throughout the yeah. property. So that they're paying attention to the fact that yes, it's there. yeah, it, right. just just to have it somewhere in writing. Well, I think that's worthwhile. Okay, but we only have control of the right of way as far as our border, right? Mm -hmm. And then right. Lebanon's is up to Lebanon. Mm -hmm. That's right. Good. They're under dispute with the orchard. All right, yeah. and then. Uh, yeah. That's a whole other. Hold on to my I, I also caught the same note of, of not saying six vehicles, just saying public parking. Well, does he left the six? But it's approximately six, so they could yeah. come in with a proposal for two. They could come in with a proposal for eight. Well, and it's also asking him preference. Yeah. You know, we're not saying this is what your proposal has to have. It's saying this is what we would like to see. Mm -hmm. Remind me, did we, was, was that, was the thick, the recommendation of the committee? No. Okay. It said public parking. It's public parking. But the public access part. Yeah, because you don't want people like, wow. Well, I think it. that provides a nice scale for somebody. We're not, not looking for a big parking lot, but looking for something that's more than two cars. The, the committee said small parking area. Right, and that would fit mm -hmm. that as a suggestion. That, to provide public access, so that makes sense. I would say I put six in there because that was a that was a discussion in the committee, so it didn't make it in the recommendation. Yeah. It's kind of one of those it just um done a nitpicky. So after a project, it needs a comma, and then pre and development needs to go to bottom. I like the idea of just providing the flexibility as you wrote in the RFP of uh, not designating exactly the number of acres, but instead just leaving it somewhat open. I think you put 70 plus 
I think that's fine. That that's a little flexibility. Man, I, I, it also it matches the, the recommendation. Yeah. The, what was the edit? If you go back, I think you put seventy five. Well, specific seventy five. Yeah. I mean, I, I, given the overwhelming preference from the the residents there. I think putting a 75 number actually makes a lot of sense. Well, that's not what the recommendation can I, is. Can I just say my yeah. reasoning for that? Development of three to five houses, if you took the high end of five houses on five acre lots, that's 25 acres. Exactly. Why would we define 70 instead yeah. of 75? Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's just a reason. Like, but it's, yeah. it's a minimum of five acres. Right. Not. I just want to provide a potential user yeah. to a little flexibility. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I mean, this is just an RFP, so they can propose. <laughs> As is, uh, how do others feel? You want to leave it at seventy or change it to seventy-five? I'm fine with it at seventy-five. Yeah, I like seventy-five. So you have a straw poll of seventy-five. Are you comfortable with that, Tracy? No, I like the flexibility aspect. So I guess what I'm asking: Do you want us to vote on the seventy versus seventy-five, or are you comfortable with the straw poll? I like the seventy plus. Okay, that's written. So we're, we'll, so far that's the only uh, red line that's been objected to. Why don't we keep going through all of them and then yeah. we'll... Is there a comment next to this cross out? Or do you want to comment? There are comments? comments, yeah. Do you want to just say the comment? No, we can... I, do, I just gave you that context. So, I mean, the, 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 that comment is just like, I don't think this makes sense here. <laughs> Let me know if you have yeah. any questions or... Yeah, yeah. 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 I also I also recommended not using the word bid here uh, mm -hmm. anywhere in there. There's a couple of instances of mm -hmm. bid just because you go on to define a series of valuation criteria, only one of which is price. So it's not a true bid in that mm -hmm. context. Mm -hmm. It's a proposal. Yeah. I, my my comment would be putting a if you have if you have questions and then a contact. Name and phone number might be those. Yeah, I can do that. There's a contact way. in there. Or, yeah, we just put it in all our. Do you think it's appropriate when someone calls you asking about it, as they naturally would, that you would identify the legal expense and costs? In other words, would you give them that range or would you leave that as open that they'd have to guess at? For what? The amount of money that's already encumbered, if you will, for the property. Oh, it's changing. I know it's changing. That's why I'm saying it's changing. So yeah. do we just let that go yeah. without any indication that uh, we're not necessarily trying to achieve market value for the property? I think so. I don't think we want to put any numbers or prices. No, I'm not here. suggesting numbers or prices, just implying the flexibility that. aspect of things. Yeah. I'm just not interested in being a fundraiser for the people that gave up the property. That's all. Well, you guys will get the choice of what you're going to actually accept at the end. And you don't have to take the highest proposal. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, I understand that. Yeah, no question <laughs> um, about it. I guess my comment just here on the additional information, um, it might make sense to say pub there's pu public information is available and contact. So you're saying in the affirmative way, you're not saying like we invite you, but you're not saying like you're totally responsible. I don't know. Um, I mean, they will anyway. It's, it's not the talk, right? There, there is a process for so, submitting questions. And right. I mean, it's here, questions. so maybe we just skip the left. Yeah. Yeah. And we do we take phone them. calls and stuff. Yeah. But we try to be really careful if we answer a question that seems substantive, mm -hmm. we document it and post yeah. it online so everybody else can see it. I like that. Okay. I like that one. I think that's a limitation yeah. for a developer. That's not allowing the property to be looked at by individuals. Yeah, I think I think the if necessary is is needed um, specifically because if, if just a private citizen makes an offer, mm -hmm. they may yeah. not need professional and developer will be changing the purchaser. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yes. But I'm, but also like I don't think somebody necessarily needs professional references if they say I want to buy it, pay the town a ton of money. Right. And put it under conservation easement. Yeah. So here's a question though: like you can't just go to the bank and be like, "I want to buy it." 
you have to show that you have adequate funding. So do we put a mechanism in there where you have either references or a, a proven funding source, or do we award it and then hope it works out? I think no, that's for the discussion we later. Work, and that's in the bid as well, mm -hmm. that we can call and discuss with individual buyers before we yeah. So I think if you guys say, you know, we'd really like to go with this person, but we want to make sure they're financially viable to do that, then that's when we start digging into the financial information. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good change. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a there's a comment actually right there. Mm -hmm. This is this is probably the most substantive one. Mm -hmm. Trying to figure out what the evaluation criteria are, I sort of laid out in that comment what I understood them to be based on that sentence. But I think it might behoove you to be a little bit more specific. If my line of thinking is what your line of thinking was in that two highlighted line section. Like what? Like Proposal what? price qualifications and requirements of the RFP. Does that mean four things as I've laid out there or not? <laughs> what what is that? What does that actual two line sentence mean? Because that's what mm -hmm. pretty much your proposers are going to go right to that section and be like, how are you? This is how you're telling a proposer how you're going to evaluate their proposal. And it's a little fuzzy. I like the little flexibility that's involved. I think exactly what you've written is an excellent memo for the select board to have mm -hmm. to illuminate us on things to look for as if we didn't know. But I don't think it's necessary to put it in the RFP. So when I evaluate something even for here, I tend to do things like I will do a, a visual scatter plot that shows like the different like say we're doing a committee and I want to be able to visually see how we're mapping it out so that we're being fair and including a group of people. Um, so I do kind of that, but I don't necessarily want to lock everybody else into my way of thinking. I guess mm -hmm. that's where I. I well, that's why I made it really vague and broad. We're going to look at proposal. We're going to look at the price. We're going to look at your qualifications, probably especially if you're a developer. And you know, did you follow the basics of the RFP? Did you give us your name, your phone number, and your there's not a lot of detailed <laughs> items that they have to put in this RFP. But. I do think one of the strengths of our particular group is that we're all from very different backgrounds mm -hmm. with different ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. So I generally think you should reserve the right to conduct an in-person interview, whether you do so or not. And then the bottom mm -hmm. bullet point is duplicative with the second bullet point. Oh, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then this particular line is what I always put in RFPs. I think you're trying to say that above with that shorter sentence about equal opportunity. I tend to be more legalistic in what that means. But well, actually, the one above it is required. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> it's basically saying the same thing. So you can take that early then. Mm -hmm. I think that one above is uh, actually broader. Yeah. Unless I'm say we put that on everything. Well, the one above is the one legally required. We don't need to over yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. There's a few commas here and there that, that you can pick them up out of Microsoft Word real quick. Like. I had a question. I think we've got them through yeah, your memo. Um, I had a question under evaluation criteria. The First 
paragraph after the bullet pointed section is a little confusing to me. The town may award a contract based on proposals received without discussion of proposals with the developer. Mm -hmm. How do you if award you without ever talking to them? If you decide to do that, you can. That gives you the right to do that. When you sit in your meeting and you look mm -hmm. at five of them, you can say, we like that one, award it, you can do that. Yes. And since it's you no, that makes sense to do that. And this is also kind of, you know, we put a lot of RFPs into this. So mm -hmm. we we buy fire trucks, we do ambulances without talking to people mm -hmm. all of that. That's okay, that was the point you were trying to get at. Mm -hmm. All right. That point makes sense. It was a little confusing on initial reading. Pretty much it's written in a way where sure. you have the right to or not to talk to someone before you award this. You bet. You don't have to talk to all of them. You can just talk to one of them. When are we just, I know the date that I, because, yeah. And um, what are you thinking target wise for? I I would probably recommend we put this out for a month mm -hmm. whenever we release it. Mm -hmm. and wait to see what comes back. Mm -hmm. cool. So, so longer than the 16 days that you initially listed. Yeah. I agree. Is is 30 days enough for I think 30 days I is think a 30 good days time. Is yeah. That's a pretty okay. long RFP process. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I try to stay in that three weeks to a month. Exactly. So they're not gonna good. do a full workup. They're gonna do a quick feasibility lesson on you. Okay. 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 So we had. Do um, you have a question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, we'll start. No, I can't. I need to. This is my position now that I have to see the other. some drink water. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to okay. see how it occurred. <laughs> so, talking about dates, maybe we go. Uh, two things that are kind of. Like, I think the clock is running for two different procedures. Because at the March 4th meeting, we heard that the the original property owner had contacted the town mm -hmm. to talk about redeeming it. And the first question is, does that, what is the, what clock starts when a landowner talks to the town about redeeming the property? Well, probably from this meeting, if we get the go ahead, let's start working on a sale, then we'll notify them that we're going to sell the property. That'll start their clock legally running of their time frames to redeem the property. And we'll run the RFP concurrently with that. Their time maybe will be longer than the 30 days. Um, but with that, that gives us time to come here, start our discussions. And so I plan on running that concurrently just so when their time's up, we can make a decision and move forward with whatever the select board would like to do. So the prior owner has a legal right to redeem the property? Yes, sure do. If we're going to sell it, they have legal. If right. we're going to sell it. I see. And what is that? What's that period? How long a period of time is that? I think they have 30 days once we let them know to let us know if they're going to do that or not. And I believe it's 45 days, but don't quote me on that to actually make the redemption from the time we contact them. So. <laughs> But you don't think it's more than 45 days? No, it's not a real long time. Yeah. So it, it would, so uh, since it's concurrent with this, this would be 30 days and they might be 45 days. Yeah, we'll notify them immediately as soon as we say, yes, we're going to sell it. And okay. Second question is, is it is it fair to say that the original property owner, when they're notified, takes priority is a matter of dealing with the landowner before the RFPs are given cons serious consideration. You can run it concurrently. Yes. But don't you owe it to a they yeah. have the right to yeah. If they choose to read to redeem it, that's they it. do they that. get it. It's not our choice. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. But I'm just saying that they have they have that 30 to 40, 45 yeah. days. Yes. To either Fold or hand you a check, and that stops the RFP process. Basically, they're Good. unfolding yeah. themselves. They've already yeah. done the fold move, <laughs> but yeah. they have one more chance. If we put the RFP out and they mm -hmm. redeem the property, 
then we have no property to sell. So we just like is in here, we won't pick anybody. Okay. So, and then third last question, and then I'll sit down. I missed the, your discussion about when the proposal will be public. We haven't had that yet. <laughs> well, okay. And <laughs> then everyone has noticed that been dealing with dates that end in 2023. They're just highlighted okay. to be changed. We always highlight them in there because those are the things we have to change right before we put them out. Okay, the right date. I'll sit down. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so just so I sort of, and I know we have come to these meetings before, but trying to keep this case together. How much land are we talking about? It's a total of 100 acres. Okay. And so is the RFP, is that going to be to sell the whole thing or sell part of it and keep part of it? Sell 100% of it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, on the on the opening one of the opening lines, it says develop three, three to five houses. So that's implying that you have to construct a house no. versus house lots. It's preference. It's I there. We don't. It's, it's there. Sentence, mm -hmm. yeah. Those bullet points are just what the preference of the board based off mm -hmm. the recommendation of the committee. But we're opening the proposal for any. Any oh, okay. scheme or idea okay. that you want to propose. Committee discussion, mm -hmm. there was actual house lots and houses built. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm mm -hmm. most curious is how it's worded there. Yeah, so we, we've tried to put together an RFP where people can bring forward any proposal they want. You know, mm -hmm. um, okay. from 100% conservation <laughs> to Okay, the whole thing. Uh, uh, Disney, Disneyland. You already heard about you know, Disneyland. And they can, I mean, right. and then, and then we, yeah, we'll select the proposal that best fits the committee in the town. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be Disneyland. I'm bullying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd make a motion to go with the edits um, we just agreed upon yeah. with this. I would like to see it be 75 acres. Um, that's my motion. I'll second that. Okay. The discussion of the motion on the table. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. The motion passes four to one. So when do we need you will probably want us to pick a date for you guys to have it ready and release it by? Is that you can, or I can just get it ready as quick as I can and okay. get it out yeah. the door. It's all the other work that's going on. I think, <laughs> I think that's fine. I like the concurrent idea of, yeah, letting yeah. The, of getting them, the, the yep. well, prior we can, owner, we can started at started. ASAP. Well, they, they can yeah. be notified immediately because exactly. that, on our choice to sell, not on okay. the to get that process. The decisions been made. I assume that their 45 days ends with a physical check, not just a we want it. Yeah, they have a certain amount of time. I think it's 30 days, if I remember right, to let us know they're going to redeem it. And then there's a certain amount of time, which I think is another 15 days or so, to actually make the redemption. And then it's over. And okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a question online. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, I think I see the first name, Jean. I can't read this last name. You say your name and go I, ahead. This is Jean uh, Belgrowski Hinshaw. Um, thank mm -hmm. you for that discussion. It was very helpful to clarify, and I appreciate the comments made and the um, edits made to, um, you know, change it from having kind of a very strong development feeling because of the developer word. I think change, making that shift, you know, kind of gives it a different feeling um, because this is a unique situation. And so I don't know if there's any sort of statement at the beginning that you could say around what I think Ed was just saying, and a few of you about, you know, while there are preferences, and maybe it's already there, um, but while there are preferences that any type of proposal is uh, welcome. Yeah, the, I think the, the first statement basically says it invites qualified people and firms uh, to submit proposals for purchase, development, and or conservation of a town of Enfield owned 100 acre parcel. And it goes from there. So that was intent there to make sure that all of those possibilities were included. 
Yeah, thank you so much. And again, mm -hmm. I really appreciate the sensitivity to the language because it's very important and how people perceive it, you know, and and react to it. So thank you. OK, thank you, Jean. All right. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So this land is going to be sold for whatever the town has in it. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets to five people look at the land and they all say, Yeah, I'm going to give you 10 bucks because mm -hmm. that's what you ask. Mm -hmm. And then you pick the one you like best out of these five. Yeah, whatever proposals are submitted, okay. we will select the one that. I, guess I was a little confused Correct. about the um, amount Correct. of money. Well, the amount can be higher too. So, so the amount of money, the town will recover only money owed to the town, back taxes, the interest, if there are other expenses the legal town fees. takes, takes undertakes, like if there are legal fees or something. The town recovers all of those. Any money in excess of that is returned to the prior property owner. That's so a law. Essentially, we're going to put this out to bid. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Now I get it. Yep. It's like a bid with a proposal component. Makes, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. You get the bid on this, but she's what you have to do with this one now. Right. No. Okay. Here's, here's, what, here's what we would like you. Right. Yeah. Uh, is, no, we're, I, we're trying to make that real clear because I could write an RFD that says you have to do this, but we're saying tell us what you want to do. This is what we would like to see done. This. So it's not like buying a land with covenants on it. No. No, we may end up putting them in the deed if they put a proposal forward and we want to make sure that they do what they say in their proposal, but we're not putting the covenants before. Mm -hmm. So you guys got your work cut out for you. <laughs> or yeah. maybe <laughs> they come up with a bunch of money and we've done all of this work to do the right thing. And yes, it's, it's, there's yeah. been a lot of work to go. That's correct. I, th I think what's important here is that we're not in the business of taking people's property, so mm -hmm. being respectful to their process and. No, I don't yeah. understand this. I list too much for a long time ago. Oh, yeah. But what at a prior meeting, there was some talk about the, yeah, the town only gets what they have in. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, I'm good now. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Uh, yes, so you had yes. first. Paul Bianco. Logistics question Is the town required to survey the land prior to the sale? No. Thank you. Sharon, did you have a question? Yeah. Hi. I just had a clarifying question. In your discussion, I said I'm Sharon Sorry. Did everybody hear that? It's a little, it's just the blowers. Okay, I'll try to speak sorry. back. It's a clarifying question. Um, so I'm just confused because I understand it's a hundred acre parcel, but then you guys were sort of saying 75, 70 acres. What's that? We were outlining the preferences from the committee's report, which was for the majority of the land to be put into conservation. And a small portion of the land with roughly a 25% development, 75% conservation. We we're putting that preference into the RFP so that people bidding would understand that that was the recommendation given to the town. And will be part of the evaluation criteria when, when bids come in. And it, to add, I think one of the things we've been doing as an organization is moving a little more away from thou shall not towards thou shall or thou shall try so getting it into kind of the affirmative where you're giving it guardrails um but maybe with some latitude but you're not doing the punitive or we're going to tell you how to do your business yeah. and and as with everything in terms of the preferences that's certainly not a hard and fast number somebody could come back with a proposal at 70 acres and that could be the best option mm -hmm. that we could take right anything else on Methodist Hill nope Say nothing. We'll move on to the probably the oldest property discussion in town. <laughs> Dear God, please <laughs> no about that. Shed Street. <laughs> uh, so we've we've gotten a good uh, update that Shed Street's going to be 
demolished. And so it's time to start talking about that property and the several year old recommendation that that be sold, which uh, I don't know if we need to have that discussion. Does anybody have an opinion other than that we should have an RFP and sell it in general? And then I'd we like can to talk start with the RFP that came out about a year and a half ago. Okay, well, so so we're agreed that an RFP oh, is the right is is the right well because if somebody wants to talk about doing something else, this would be the time to do it before we start talking about an RFP. And keep it for a second, DPW. <laughs> yes, sure, not. Okay. <laughs> I don't think so. In the interest of time, I'm not hearing any should, real should we make a motion that we intend to do no, more? No, I don't, no, we don't need a motion. I just want to make sure if somebody had an objection to that approach, there were a new board in the new year. This is the mm -hmm. time to bring it forth. Uh, I don't hear one. We can discuss uh, an RFP for DPW that would be similar to the one that was just presented for Methodist mm -hmm. Hill. Uh, and I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, Ed. Go ahead. I, you're would recommend, I read through the other one before, <laughs> and I would recommend we move away from that. It was extremely complex to the point that I don't think we need it. I, I like something similar to Methodist Hill. Of, here's kind of what we would like to see you do with it, but let us know. That can be the starting point. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I that, think that's it's, fine. I this is a lot easier. We can mm -hmm. make it, I can make these changes and make it very similar to this with a preference list in there and I guess that's what I was looking yeah. for tonight is to see yeah. what your guys's preference is. My only preference is that I don't feel we need to limit uh, as we did at Methodist Hill to a specific access to the rail trail. I don't feel it's necessary. You can go around the corner and it's just great. Um, I would but this is a different plan which we have discussed that property around the corner. I won't bring that up right now but I don't think we need any specific public access through the Shed Street property to the rail trail. Yeah. Why I wouldn't we? However it's worded, I guess what I would like to see shine a little bit in this RFP is an emphasis on creativity um, so that, we're, you know, um, it doesn't have to be the same old boring proposal. I don't know. It's going to, that's more of the spirit of how it's written. So if we are saying, you know, we're willing to accept, you know, proposals for a wide variety of mixed uses or something. I, I'm not saying it. That's the wording. I just I want to be able to see maybe someone comes to us with age in place housing or cottages or condos or they have a coffee shop that's open to the public and the residents get, you know, I think they just I want to be able to see something that respects the character of that residential neighborhood while making it getting it back onto the tax rolls. And uh, I think we have a duty to do something about housing here too. So do we want a preference housing? I, I think it has to have some kind of housing. I, I sort of, I, I agree we need housing. I mean, nationwide, that that's the case. It's certainly the case in the Upper Valley, mm -hmm. but I, I would hate to at this point mm -hmm. start narrowing the focus mm -hmm. like that. Let's see what we get. I agree with the broad strokes that we I'd like to see some broad strokes. Brad, has that yeah, Brad Rich, how large is the lot? Just curious. It's roughly two acres and it's uh, town water and sewer. Town water and sewer, roughly two acres. If you want the um, well on a housing comment, if you look at Ann's place, that's on a smaller lot that has like 11 units. It's a nice example of what can be done on that scale of a lot. A little more than two. It's about 2.7. We have yeah. talked to a developer that put, could put forward not a written plan, but he showed us what he did in other places and then put forward a plan of about 20 housing units. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's a gorgeous piece of property it's for it development. Is. It is. Yeah. Rail trail in the backyard, river behind that. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Walking it's distance to walking distance everything. to yeah. schools, bike ride to the schools. And we own it outright. It's a marvelous piece of property for someone to think one, about. One, one thing I wanted to ask about is um, do we want to include sort of expediency as one of the criteria? Because what I would not like to see is somebody to present a great plan, mm -hmm. buy it, and then sit on it for 10 years. I don't think we need to put that in because I have precisely that in my head mm -hmm. as an obligation for the Methodist Hill property. Mm -hmm. Well, but we in the Methodist Hill property, we did say some of our preferences. Right. So could we add it right. in as a, a preference so that people know it's going to be a criteria? 
I, I guess I, if you know you're not going to let somebody sit on it for 10 years and there's no chance you're going to give it to them, right. shouldn't you tell them up front? Well, and it's something you could do on either of those once you make the decision as well. Of they have yeah. what they call reverter clauses where they have a certain right. amount of time to make a certain amount of progress yeah. or it just reverts back to the town. I, I see as part of the discussion phase. Yeah. You, when you go back to the but a preference could be to have it developed as soon as possible. Yeah. I mean, I think if you if you're looking at preferences, I think that'd be one that I would have would be the person who's ready, you know, essentially ready to go. I mean, you're talking a couple of years, no matter what, just from a sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. we can make them put that in the bid of when they would expect yeah. to develop it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just put it just like that. When would yeah. you expect to develop it? Yeah. Yeah. Without saying what our parameters might yeah. be. And. I, I know others have said others. I would be perfectly comfortable saying that housing would be a preference. Mm -hmm. um, given the, you know, there's a lot of concern around workforce housing. I'd even say that a proposal for workforce housing could potentially be a preference over other ones. I throw that out. I tend to agree with John. I just want to leave it wide open. I really want to see some okay. innovative proposal come through, mm -hmm. and I don't want to predict what that might be. What is is that the what is it zoned there? It's the R one. Special. No, no it's that no, we did rezone that, didn't we? And it passed. Yeah. Village is on. Yeah, I just want to follow up on that a comment. Would you require that the person who purchased it, who develops it, develops it, follows the existing the current whatever is current for the zoning for that area? Um any proposal would presumably be evaluated in the current zone and we don't have other zoning. Right. But, yeah, but I, the town owns the property, you can... The town's make, not developing it, so we it. would sell right. it and then they would develop it, yeah, so they're yeah, going to have to follow the zoning. Because you still own it. Well, you can... So we're, we're not no. developing it. Yeah. No, they'll have to submit their plans under current zoning yeah. law. No, yeah. the, it would be... And if they needed exceptions, it would be on their burden to get them. The town's not right. Like any other... Private right. developer. Right, exactly. Right. It will have to go through zoning and planning like every other development. Now, that being said, say they wanted to make a proposal and get a conceptual to see if it would ever fly. That would, That's something that's always allowable, right? Yeah. You can always do conceptual. Exactly. Yeah, they can make a proposal based on acceptance and permitting of mm -hmm. what their proposal is. Right. As any purchase can be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Hi, this is a question in your, um, Mr. Young, you wanted to keep it open and certainly that's that's an option. And you had talked about workforce housing. Mm -hmm. Is, you know, thinking about your master plan for Enfield, really part of that is workforce housing. You, um, part of that is senior housing. Um, and I know it's hard for developers to kind of do that. Um, but I wonder, could you keep it open? But make some some statement about you know some preference for a percent of it to be maybe workforce housing because I think what I see in Enfield is I know at least I know one person who can't afford a house here um, who works here but lives had to buy a house someplace else and I also know a, a person Melanie who used to work at the library had a really hard time as a young professional in this town you know finding a place to live um, so. You know, just going forward, I would ask you to consider if it's in the master plan, how is that going to go forward and come out in some of these projects? Thank you. Is there, is there a way to write that in that, that you would feel would not be limiting, but would still... So we're, we're going around in circles yeah. now. Right. Yeah, you're right. We, we've right. got to sort of, I think, move What if forward. we say aligns with the vision of the master plan? I don't see any harm in letting a developer present whatever they think is worthwhile. It's their effort, not ours, other than to read what they submit. Hey, uh, my name is Dan Regan. I respect all the different points of view that I heard, but one of the things we've been hearing loud and clear over the last couple of months is also the taxes. Mm -hmm. So don't we have an obligation here to try to get the most possible for this while balancing it with the master plan? Mm -hmm. And for that reason, we want, we want to leave it very open. Yeah. And I think when you say most, um, 
a lot of people immediately think of the initial purchase price. M- most for me is the total package of future taxes. And, well said. Yeah. Very well said. So I just want to yeah be cognizant. Like we might set someone might come to us with a creative proposal that isn't the most money for the sale price, but come to us with something that's going to really put more taxes on the book. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And I mean, it's a one a one time gain is nothing like getting a larger long term one. Mm-hmm. Absolutely yeah. agree. And I think by leaving it open, you yeah. give yourself the opportunity to look at that broad picture. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Ed, do you feel you have what you need? I think so. Okay. It's going to be a pretty open thing in yeah. RFP. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so yeah. I agree with Dan and Tracy. Okay. Get all you can. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been wanting to sell this baby for like 20 years. You got what you need. You'll develop an RFP and bring it back when, when it's ready. Right. Right. my party you, a lot when sell This it. is exciting. <laughs> yes, it really yeah. is. All right. Uh, next up, <laughs> town electronic mm-hmm. sign policy. Mm-hmm. So in your packet is a draft mm-hmm. policy we put together. Um, long story short, it allows um, use of the electronic sign in front of the community building for town information purposes, of course, emergency purposes, and then for open public events that will be held at the community building or Hughes Park. That's it. Um, there's one thing to really caveat when you're talking about public or use mm-hmm. of public space like that it creates a first amendment right issue mm-hmm. so you start opening it to other outside groups and other things around town you can't limit who can and who cannot vote to that mm-hmm. so i think we need to keep it fairly tight on who we allow to, to post to there yeah um, i don't see what, already, why we would allow anyone other than official town notices can i give an example yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to give an example because this is one. Um, so I'm going to put my friends in Masco my hat on for a minute. Um, so the food pantry moves around because we're we're homeless um, since COVID kind of. And we move in through the grace of the town. We move into the parking lot, into the pavilion and work. Um, we've been in the police station and it's it's a challenge. Um, when there was a weather emergency, I called and asked and initially got told no. And I I understand the, the desire not to have everybody putting stuff up. But in this case, the police department when, would be the ones who would be delivering the food. So it was kind of one of those like just trying to make it so that you don't have to do this extra work. So and I don't think that's um, and that was one where normally we would have been physically on the town property and he was part. Yeah. The so, other one that I want to point out a little mm-hmm. is for the last year we've been caveating out a little bit mm-hmm. the lion's club and the lionesses mm-hmm. we don't want to necessarily just preference them but we also removed their sign to put this in place so i don't think it's right not to allow them to have a place or we or we should allow them to pull their sign back up there which was not the prettiest looking thing so to be able to put the the corned beef and cabbage dinner that's going to be hosted and open to the public to come to and things I think is the right thing to do. I respect that and I certainly want to support them but was there anything in the original uh, documents that required them to have a sign there that we have to continue to no, support? I don't believe they're in the document. Okay. So it would be your guys' decision but it was there for a long long time. So, um. <clears throat> Can what is the context of us looking at this policy? And is it just is it revising something? Is it creating something it's new? It's brand new. It's brand new. And after probably nothing or something happened or there was confusion. No, there was a lot of discussion in the zoning when we got a zoning variance, because the mm-hmm. as of right now in the town, your sign cannot change messaging more than once every 24 hours. Mm-hmm. So we had to get a variance to be able to put this sign there and use it. The primary discussion during that whole zoning thing was who can message on it, what messages would be allowed. And then when they actually acted and wrote their official opinion, it was my opinion that it was the lion's lioness in town could post on it. Mm-hmm. In the actual opinion that came out, none of the none of that was in there. We just got our variance. And 
So we've had a few things. What really brought this to line, I've been thinking for a while I needed to write one. And mm -hmm. with everything mm -hmm. going on, I haven't been. And then the candidates night happened and it was, can you put this on? We told them no, because we weren't letting outside town events post on there. And I thought, you know, we need to write this, have the discussion, decide what we want to do, and then we can implement the policy. So under this policy, could we give them permission in the future? Do you think there's anything written here that allows us to do that? Yeah, it would be an open public event if it was hosted at the community building or here's mm -hmm. part. So the notation ought to be just a little bit clearer if it's hosted at the Enfield Community Building. It's or it's open public I said, held up. yeah. And by in line one. Yeah. Yeah. Point three on the list on the guidelines would seem to be not part of the signage policy, but instead is a policy of the building. So I don't know why that needs to be on the sign policy. Well, these are the ones that can write to it. Mm -hmm. If it says open public events held at the community building must be non commercial, it dictates what the building will host. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have anything to do no. with the sign. Uh, no, it it's says that does it? I think a commercial entity, we wouldn't want them posting on the sign. So say you have an art association. We wouldn't want oh, oh, no, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that that line seems to refer more to the use of the building no. than to the use of the sign. No, it's writing no, policy guidelines. It's policy say. guidelines, so it refers to the use of the sign. Yeah. People can, you yeah. know, okay. This is a guideline that refers back. Um, there mm -hmm. may be... Saw your hand go up. So you can't have a wedding in the community building. You can, but you wouldn't publicize it on the sign. Right. But it says yeah. held at the community building must be non-commercial, community oriented, and accessible to all residents. So you can't have a wedding there. You can. Well, you can't. But then anyone can walk into the wedding off the street. Time out. No. You can't advertise on the sign. This is purely about who can post on the sign. It has nothing to do with the use of the building. It is saying that if you have a public event that is non-commercial, community-oriented, and accessible to all residents, you are allowed to post on the sign. Well, oh, that's wedding, not exactly what that sentence not says. What it says. That was my point. That's not what it says. It's a guideline. I'd be happy if we made the okay. sentence a little bit longer. Okay. Well, I think, though, let's go up to line two. Town messaging includes official announcements, community updates, emergency information and relevant information from the town of Enfield. We are not saying that that is the def town-wide definition. We are saying that that is the definition in the policy guidelines, right? So you have to look at it within the framework of the document you're in and not as a town-wide statement. We're not saying town-wide, these are going into other, where these are the specific policy guidelines for the electronic sign usage. However, so let's take that to maybe in draft two, we'll can you check it, number mm -hmm. three? Yep. Okay. David, did you have a, a comment? David Gray. Uh, yes, uh, many of you have participated in, in previous uh, years, uh, and uh, this most recent one a few weeks ago, uh, the uh, candidates forum, um, candidates tonight, you know what you want to call it, um, has been uh, a popular public service event like uh, Friends of Mascoma. Um, and held at the uh, uh, community building, uh, which is a, seems to be an appropriate size, and uh, uh, with some work on the acoustics, uh, seems to be doing well as a for a hybrid uh, event. Um, the last couple of years, we've been unable to post um, notices on those signs. People probably get tired of the uh, the listserv posts, um, but uh, uh, it, it would certainly be something that um, I think is beneficial to the community. Yeah, thank you. And according to this document, you would be able to do that in the future. Yeah. Right. If, there we go. Can I, just, can I ask a clarifying question just to see what you guys think? So, like the PT, say the, PT, the PTA uses it for a kid saying it's their like quarter sale because that's com is that considered commercial? They're a nonprofit, or is that considered fundraising? So that's not allowable on the sign. Mm -hmm. Do we allow fund? That ties in exactly with my question which is what about the fair which is a commercial enterprise when it occurs although it benefits the lions yeah it's i would consider that non-profit i would consider a ppa event held at the community building to be non-profit open to the public so okay that's non-commercial okay okay maybe we should clarify that as well 
Sorry, he's behind you, Seth. <laughs> yes, thank you. Nate Miller, can I ask a, a, I don't have a copy of the draft, but I'm quite interested in your draft. Mm -hmm. um, are events at the Enfield Village School? If the Lions Club is holding an event, let's say, Frosty's Craft Work mm -hmm. at the Enfield Village School, they're not allowed to use the sign. No. Policy. no. They currently are, but they're not. Okay. I will just say, I don't think it's good public policy to make, to reserve one particular mm -hmm. nonprofit agency yeah. or yeah. entity, the Lions Club, mm -hmm. to have personal billboard use over mm -hmm. a taxpayer funded sign. I think it needs to be more equitable than that. I don't think there should be car outs. I don't think that's appropriate public policy. And I just like to put that on the record. Yeah. I, I do have one request for consideration, which is that um, as part of policy, we follow our own town zoning ordinance and only change the sign once a day, unless there's some urgent public interest. You mean the ser but the series could still, because that no, 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 the, the, no. The, the zoning ordinance policy, zoning ordinance is that you get one changeover per day. So we would not flash between the time and something else. And I know Ed and I disagree on this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so the whole purpose. that's the whole purpose of it. Otherwise, you're just going to have one yeah. thing up all the time. I, yep. Well, one thing per day. Go ahead, Jeff. The whole purpose of the ordinance was so it wasn't going to be right. like the Mascoma Regional High School right. where cars slow right. down because it's turns and they want to know what the next right. message is. Right. And we and, <laughs> and we certainly <laughs> on, the, on the zoning side have heard lots of feedback of not right. wanting lighted signs, the change, the compromise that was right. found was, you know, light, lighted signs are the reality of the world today, but not having them become, become having a change was a compromise to allow anybody to have a sign that's lighted, but balance that with, uh, you know, the residents desire to not have lots of lighted signs flashing at them as they drive along. Didn't they already get a variance for they, they yeah. did. However, we're setting a policy. Okay. I, I mean, so I just, would still what's be the place. point of having the sign? I'm yeah. like, tear it down, make a bunch yeah. of people happy. I, I guess <laughs> I would guess I would say on a, I, I find the sign valuable. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure I've seen more than one valuable message per day, just in general. And I think, uh, and I do think that obviously there would be an exception for if there's some need for public notice, you know. Uh, and then, like, if a road is closed, you know, you change the sign the moment the road's closed. Um, but I will put that out for consideration to the four of you. I liked um, Roy's theory kind of about he timed how long the sight line was and made it so, I mean, it won't always work, right, timing-wise, but you made the distance, the school one's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. and that's very different. This is, I, how many seconds did he has it's a, about 15 seconds. So it's, and it's the time. And I think kind we of actually practical. do 30 second changes. Yeah. So I guess I'm more interested in having the changes, but having them be a lot longer so that you don't get in the habit of. I mean, if you sit in the middle of the road to watch that sign change, you need another hobby. Yeah. And, and, well, I'd also put on there that we've been watching to see if there were any traffic issues because of that, and there has been not. Um, and people need I to live there and nobody's slowing down for the sign in my estimation. <laughs> They're still going to run you over on the way to They're going to run me over. Then we don't have it flashing enough. Um, just two minor um, lines, one and three. When we say Enfield Community Building, if we're going to say Community Building for the capital B elsewhere, we should probably just keep it aligned. And then on line four, um, where it says PSAC coordinator, that's I think we should spell out that it's public safety administrative coordinator. I agree. Yeah. And I, just that was one of my points to get rid of the acronym. Yeah, I mean we're trying, right? We're so used to doing it, but we're trying. <laughs> I was wondering about point number eight. Any misuse, etc. Um, isn't that are we just slapping ourselves on the wrist? The only misuse misuse can come from us. No, because you could lie I, and say it's a public non-paid event and that. But we're going to interpret that according to our own policy. We won't put it up there unless it meets our policy. So why do we need that line that says, if we make a mistake, we're going to slap ourselves on the wrist? It's not saying us. It's saying, yeah. it's what she said, if someone lies, comes to us, and they're up there. A lifetime sign ban, baby. 
it just gives us some flexibility yeah. to say no, we're not putting your message out. <laughs> okay. Like you told us you were giving away this, but you were actually selling. In this um, case, any lies will be slapped on the wrist. Okay. Right. In my innocence, I thought eh, this will be a 10 minute discussion. Yeah. They are. <laughs> I don't think we do any. No problem. <laughs> hey, at least we aren't just like stamping stuff, you guys. So you're right. You're right. So we want a slight rewrite on item three. Was there any other substantive? I'll bring back some changes. Um, the, the only side comment I'd make is I'd love to see the town logo go on the upper sign. Can we consider that? It is, okay. It was planned, it just wasn't ready. Um, just one question for me. Is there some number of maximum, like, do we say, like, when you hit X number for the day, like five? We decided not to do that. Okay, that we nope, that's fine. Play with that as we move along. And so, it, we'll sorry, yours doesn't situation. fit this week. It's like a litter bag. It's fine. I think that's also a reason why we asked them to give it to us a week ahead of time. Mm -hmm. If we have too many of them, we could put some up this day, some up that day. We could determine if they're lying. It could be a really okay. happy impulse. All right. So, it's going to do a draft, and next time we can take mm -hmm. five minutes and just. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. I'll go through line by line. <laughs> All right. Uh, next item uh, town meeting discussion. This is intended as a, a debrief or comments from town meeting. Um, if people have them. Can or, I kick off with um, just location? I know that we've gone back to the school. It's tradition. Uh, the parking on the muddy and like up on the playground. Like I never imagined people were going to drive onto a children's playground. So we have a parking issue like we always do downtown, but just um, that begs the question, is that an appropriate venue? And then we got a lot of comments from how long it was about, wouldn't it be nice if we were in the auditorium, which we have talked about before. So I wanted to throw out there, can we consider the auditorium? And, you know, I gave someone my SUV and they drive them up there. I don't know. I just want to think about that for the future because we're going to have a beautiful new space in Whitney Hall, but I don't think that's going to be big enough. No, and, 250. And you're still going to have yucky, some probably yucky metal chairs some places. Um, can we make people more comfortable in a place with more parking and just either see if we can find a creative way to bust them or do whatever? Also, the sound quality, I think, is better in the auditorium. And I did get some feedback that with like chairs moving and people shuffling. Uh, the kids were the MVPs for best behaved. I just want to say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's my venue one. Other, other thoughts on that? Is it... A similar one to the sound. I was wondering, do we own that sound equipment or did we lease it? We rented that. So next year, wherever it's held, can we get a microphone that's more flexible than that one? Uh, the difficulty of adjusting that to certain people seemed ridiculous. If we could get one that is on a... Um, an extenuated flexible lead, then you can move it up and down. If you do it in the high school, they own the sound equipment. Um, we don't have to pay. Like it might off that cost, might offset like running a bus or I don't know. I will say that I thought the lawyer was excellent. Yeah. His willingness to speak a little more than just yes or no or something. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought his input was was quite good. And he's been with us for many years. He has, but yeah, he, he knows that this year he had he was asked some tough questions yeah. and he was willing to speak on them. And he did, and I, I appreciate that. Without bias. Um, next year, I'd like to see a video recording at all possible. Somehow, I'd like to see the, the meeting recorded. Um, and a couple of other things. Next year, because we'll have one project maybe completed, but one underway, I'd like to see a photo board of projects that we have underway. And perhaps there are other things in town that need to be uh, put on a photo board. Um, and then my last question would be, and this is more for Lindsay, um, to ask her if we can get speakers to um, stick to the question at hand. She did try very. She hard. did try, but and she, she has the right to, to be tougher. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It is. She did a great job, and, um, and I, I would just want to emphasize our support for her to be as diligent as she needs to be to help control the timelines. 
I would say she vehemently defended people who weren't even treating her or talking to her very nicely. She did, I thought too. some of the behavior was appalling, and she still made sure they got to speak. And I thought mm -hmm. that was pretty admirable. I want her to know that we're behind her 100% as far as supporting what she does. And if she feels that she needs the support to control some of the discussion, she has it, at least from my end. She can do that, and me and the attorney did talk to her about a couple ways that we could have sped a few things up. So, yeah. I thought overall, I, I was impressed with, with, with the meeting. It, it was got off along, certainly, but people really kept at it. Um, obviously, there was a lot of motivation to uh, wait for the uh, petition warrant articles to come up. But uh, I thought the, the budget discussion, while there was, you know, a lot of anxiety about budget, mm -hmm. uh, and we all have to recognize that. Mm -hmm. But I think people were, they stuck to the point. They were generally polite. I, I spent, you know, I tried to walk around a lot just saying hello, and, mm -hmm. and people were very, very pleasant. Um, so I think it was really in the tradition of the New England town meeting, you know, people they grappled with tough things and they got to know a little bit more about the town. Mm -hmm. Alice? Yeah, I think the the budget passing and the budget discussion was a great example and reminder to me of like front loading with information. Dimitri's mm -hmm. presentation was so thorough and in anticipated questions and anticipated discussions. It was clear that he spent a lot of time thinking about that. And I saw it some I saw it several times and he refined it after each one using like an iterative listening and, and improving it. Um it was my first one, so I don't know, like I don't remember if they were ever that long. No. <laughs> no. It was my first one sitting up front. Um, yeah, in, in years past when I wasn't on the board, maybe I left a little early, I don't know. Um, <laughs> they notice if we sneak out. <laughs> they would notice if I snuck out this year, yeah. Um, I thought it went really well. I I thought about Lindsay's role a lot. Mm -hmm. I think um, I think she handled it well. I think that there's a struggle between making sure that nobody feels silenced and making mm -hmm. sure that everybody feels heard mm -hmm. and then you know letting things get off topic and mm -hmm. i think that that's a learning process for me and probably her as well um and that's all i got mm -hmm. okay. i don't think i have anything to add from what was not particular to this but i had a question for you Ed. did we determine which articles had to be on the town meeting as opposed to warrant articles that could possibly have been voted on Tuesday? There, that we do that in that yeah. 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 So were all the warrant articles that we voted on Saturday dictated to be on Saturday? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's not yeah. something we have to share. There are RSA. special ones that are allowed to go on Tuesday. On Tuesday, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Zoning and planning, I think, are the only <clears throat> Tuesday articles. Mm -hmm. for and just thinking about the feedback we got from folks, you know, while we were listening to each of the articles, I thought one of the things that was really helpful for me, um, you know, we've heard a lot of feedback on the budget, but in particular on the short term rental ordinance, I was very interested to see the number of people who wanted to see further development or further thought, mm -hmm. because it was that one was very, very close. Um, and I don't want to be like, well, it's a hard because to me, those people who had those very strong questions, they are in a hard no, I'm not saying press it, but how do we as a board listen to them and those concerns and and what weave it into some of our work this year? Yeah, no, I think that that came through to me as well. That, mm -hmm. that that's something that there are a number of requests for more data or mm -hmm. just more explanation, more education. Mm -hmm. uh, I think at a near future meeting, we should have, but we, we should have it on our agenda to discuss that and decide a path forward, which may be we got a road, it may be, you know, something else. All right. Go ahead, Jean. Um, yeah, that was a long one, and I hope we don't have to do that again forever. Um, but anyways, so I'm just curious, like the warrant articles, and I didn't have anything to do with writing these, but the ones that were petitioned that ended up being not binding, not legal, whatever. 
So does our town council review all the warrants and make a determination whether they are binding or not binding? And then in turn, does the town notify the petitioners that those articles are not binding or legal before town meeting? We don't notify them, but we did have an open select board meeting where we discussed each and every one yeah. of those prior to town meeting. Is it possible, um, I know this is an extra step, but for me, I felt like, and yeah, I know I was sort of part of some of those discussions of the petitions, but I wasn't the writer, that after we went through that process, I'm thinking, okay, this was crazy. These shouldn't even have been on this warrant whatsoever and could have chopped off hopefully a couple of hours mm -hmm. or they, so they have to go on the warrant once they're petitioned yeah. oh we're yeah. really obligated to put them on the, the town can contact the petitioner and say we're advising you that these are not legal or not binding no because it's the 25 people that signed mm -hmm. as well and in my view would be i don't think it's appropriate for the town to right make a statement like that to a petitioner. I mean, one of the purposes of petition warrant articles is for citizens to be able to put what they want on the warrant. Right, but for me, I'm feeling that it's yeah. not really the town <laughs> making that, it's coming through the legal counsel for that. But I mean, I just felt, for me, I felt like, okay, this was a total waste and I would hope in the future, and you know, I'm maybe a tiny bit guilty and should have, said something and I know other people that signed it said to me after the fact, well, I thought about that and I should have said something. Um, so I guess I think that maybe there needs to be some more education about, mm -hmm. I don't know if the town can let people know or something that can, maybe there could be a training session on more written warn articles or whatever, so that people are not spinning their wheels, taking all that time and then finding out mm -hmm. and in the end that, well, I have two things on that. One, like he said, they're non-binding, but they're still advisory. Mm -hmm. So if that if that would have passed overwhelmingly, the select board, I think, would have to seriously discuss that and say, it may not be binding, but is that something that we want to put in place? Two, in the town office, we are always open and willing to help you write any warrant article Mm -hmm. And if it's way ahead of time and we have time, I have no problem talking with town council to see his opinion on something before we have it on the warrant and the petitioner didn't want it on the warrant because it wasn't <laughs> or something. So we're more than willing to help with people to try to find the right wording to get it done. Um, we're not here in the town office to, you know, push our opinion to be on the Warren article. We're here to help the citizens and the select board get the things forward that they want to get forward. But I think that would imply that people come to see us before they start collecting signatures. Once they have the signatures and have given the document to us, our hands are tied. And I've done that with folks in the past when they've been like, hey, I have this idea. I'm like, you know what? If you want to make sure that it's binding, this is the process you could go through. You know, we're not going to get you a full legal opinion and write it for you, but we could say, you know, uh, we found out from the lawyer it isn't, right? We're not necessarily going to do someone's work. And a really good example of that is SB2. That warrant article has specific legal wording. People have wanted to put that up before, come and started with the wrong wording. And I went to Lisa and um, because I do want people to be heard because I think in every one of these articles, whether I agree with them or not, there's a bit of a truth and there's some ideas, right? And so we learn from our neighbors through those things. So we hear them, we understand, we feel the frustration and, and we learn something together. So I'm, I'm willing to do that learning, but I agree, like it's a little bit of a bummer that up front and there's no way to change it after the fact. Okay. But I think, Jean... Uh, as John just suggested, mm -hmm. it is an excellent idea for someone who has a petition idea to come to the town, mm -hmm. take advantage of the resources that are there, including potential legal review, which is there or can be done before they go out and get 25, 50 or 100 signatures. Mm -hmm. And then they would know perhaps they have to change the wording. Mm -hmm. Perhaps they won't do it at all. Take advantage of the town resources. They're paying for it. When people do warrant articles like that and they're not binding, yeah, it does 
kind of send a message to someone out there of ideas. But personally, for me, I don't care about spending another seven hours at a town meeting again. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just going to say, you were talking about the audio. The biggest audio issue you actually had was the person who was running the audio. Yes. Because if you leave the mics live, mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been a problem. Mm -hmm. But every time the one on the left was being used, it was dead because she took it down. The ones in the public, you could leave live. You're five feet away from it. Believe me, you had to be six inches from it. You knew it. If your mic had been live, there wouldn't have been a problem other than the feedback. But uh, yeah. if you left them live, you wouldn't have had a problem with any of the mics. Every time somebody wanted to talk, the mic was dead. Was that an instruction that we had given her? That's what it's they've not, been doing every time, and it's they've like gotten the much back. better in the yeah. past. Well, yeah, because we used to have three. three. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 Three. 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 three out there, and they were always job. live. Who has done it for no, years? The gentleman who did it before, who is very good at it. <laughs> but this gentleman has been doing it for a number of years. Wait, he knows a guy. Did he want to come on the No, no, Dan, Dan Reagan. Uh, just a couple of comments. One, I thought Dimitri was amazing. That was the third time I had seen that presentation as well. You might not have agreed with everything that was presented, but the way it was presented was fantastic. Um, I thought we required Dimitri to submit to tenure. He's stuck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, second thought, Lindsay was, was great. Um, however, one of the things we've heard loud and clear is we want more people at town meetings. And seven and a half hours is not the way to get them there. Mm -hmm. We all know that. Mm -hmm. I've been very impressed with all the select board meetings that I've gone to, budget committee meetings and other meetings, how well they are managed. And one of the things that we do is we limit how long people can talk. And we say two minutes. Can we do that or is that illegal to do at a town meeting to say it's a two minute and the clock starts and then and then respectfully, and I think Lindsay handled everything respectfully, say, excuse me, your time is up. We're going to have to move on to the next person after we answer your questions. I think legally you can do that. You, know, you, have, can't, to have, you have to treat that. everyone very, very equally was my understanding, which is yeah. why I tend to tell people in advance, like the target is really three minutes for me because that's about how long someone's going to listen to you. <laughs> I, do, I don't want to. Yeah. You like, just answer that that's something that we can definitely pass on to Lindsay yeah. look into. Yeah. Right. But I don't think we can tell her how to do it. You, no. you may want to watch out. Yeah. Why I say that is because I believe it was Londonderry School District mm -hmm. had a three minute on their school district. It went to court and they said, no, it can't yeah. be that short. You can't, you can't so do it hard and fast. It, they said, yeah, you could probably hold it at five, but you can't hold it at two. Mm -hmm. You can't hold it at one. Mm -hmm. Three is on the edge, so you might want to say five. Uh, so I think I've seen Bridget's hand up for a while online. Bridget, Labrie, go ahead and unmute. Hey, I was just going to note. Um, so when you were talking about the mics, the gentleman who was running them was kind of just sitting to my right. I think his biggest challenge was because he was sitting low on the bleachers so that he could get up and down. He just couldn't see who was starting to talk. But when he did leave the mics live, just like right now, when other people in the room are talking and you guys are trying to talk, when for us sitting here and even on the speakers, some it picks all of that up and it's really hard to hear the select board members or the people at the table speaking. Um, and it was hard, I know, and I'm not begrudging anybody because it was seven hours um, when snacks were being eaten up at the table, when those yeah. mics were on it was it was making it hard to hear the people who were at the microphone so i think you know he was trying to fight feedback he was trying to fight giving you guys the ability to not have every sound heard um but also as far as the recording jim was there bonner from enfield channel eight recording so i don't know if he had enough to go all the full time but um he i did see him there so i think you know, whether or not it's just a partnership or we have our own setup in the future. But if people are, recording, I would keep an eye out for that. Thank you, Bridget. I'll come right. on David, I saw you. Here. Look. If you do set a short, uh, sorry, David Fagan, uh, if you do set a short uh, time limit, uh, whether it's three or five minutes, it's also possible for the uh, body to uh, 
we stand that. So that's just a request. <laughs> What many people don't realize is the longer you talk at such a meeting, the less people are going to listen to you. I don't talk to do the question. <laughs> Did you see me clapping for you? No. Uh, I was so thankful every time you got one. Brother, the jeans coming. I think in the interest of time, I'm going to move this question unless there's something new that we yeah. haven't discussed. Go. A lot of good feedback. Yeah. Thank you all for that. Uh, it was a good time meeting. And, uh, You'll have another good year ahead of us. OK, strategic planning and discussion. I'd like to make a suggestion, if I might. Yes. I'd like to postpone this discussion. I'm sorry, I know you need it. Um, there's a number of items still on the list, and it's 8 o'clock. Um, I'd like to see if we couldn't postpone strategic planning review for the next meeting. I, I guess. Um, were there any changes other than the one I suggested? Oh, yeah. Did you the one send them in color though, right? You got it sent to you in oh. color. This draft printed is not. Okay. There's a it's a whole bunch of red lines. Okay. Yeah, I did not print that out. I didn't. Yeah, no, this is. I didn't either, and I just scanned through it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I made my edits and then didn't send them to you. That's my bad. Um, I just had some questions sure. about like format and brevity. Okay, so we, we definitely don't need to discuss those. No. Um, with the pleasure on uh, Tracy's suggestion that we put this on the next town meeting. How big of a pain is that for you? Next. It's Do not. We just don't officially have one in the staff in, but. But okay. not be working on it until you guys right. give us the go. <laughs> the, uh, did, we, did anyone have any really substantive? Well, I put, like well, I put, a, we I put a substantive one in. There were a lot of one yeah. substantive, but I would I like you. My notes were written and not submitted to Ed, but I don't have a great deal of them. We do have two members that aren't going to be at the next meeting. Yes, right? I will not be at the You're next right. meeting. Are you at the next one, April 1st? Yeah. Oh, you are. Okay. I thought you weren't. No, I am. Oh, good. I, I mean, but John, John, John submitted his edit. Yeah. My mistake. He was not, he's on the good boy list. Ed may never forgive me for that. Okay. No, never <laughs> we can we can push it and okay. if you guys can the packet yeah. that were sent out. Yeah. It's color with red lines. Yeah. Review those. If you have any edits, get them to me, and we can get another one out. But. Mm -hmm. Okay. I am here. Send it out to me again. I did not get a packet with red lines. Um, okay. It's in the PDF. I can send you guys the word document. Yeah. I'll pull I, I got a word document, but I did not get one with red lines. Okay. Okay. So I'll send you guys the word. I even changed my ink and everything. We will table that for now. Okay. And we will go to uh, acceptance of donation to community nursing fund in the amount of $2,500. I move acceptance with thanks. I second. I will I I will note that he did follow it up with another donation on the next line we'll discuss. Well on that, I mean it's the whole thing. Yep. So yep. It's the, that ends the business. So administrative items. Mm -hmm. Uh this is for a property tax abatement for B and B. I believe this was this, correcting this the mistake. Interest. Um, yeah that accrued when the payment went to the wrong place. Yeah, so there was a yeah. payment made on time, went into the wrong account. No, and it was miswritten. Well, Regardless, it, it was a, a mistake was made. Account, a mistake was made <clears throat> because of the mistake. It went in the wrong account. It went in the wrong account. And just accrued while they were late, even though they had made the payment. Right, I just don't want to fault our staff yeah. for having yeah. made the error. Oh no, all that's very, very clear. There was no, Nothing other than just a pure mistake. Um, so this is a request to abate the interest that accrued while it was in the wrong account. Uh, I'll make a motion that we abate the interest that accrued while it was in the wrong account. So the money was there. I'll second that completely and just make a, a and just make a note if I could mm -hmm. uh, that it's a one-time thing. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Okay, we are to 
public comments? Any uh, public comments? No, we scared them all away. <laughs> yes, Sharon. Sure. I just want to say thank you. This was probably one of the most useful board selection meetings that I have been to in the past year. I really appreciate hearing the discussion and the review of the thoughtful way that you approach things and the suggestions you made. It was fabulous. So um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Dan. Echo that. Good job. I'm glad to see the five of you back again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And more, David. I'll also echo that. I think this was a, a, a very productive meeting. Um, it, it was able to be followed, um, except for a few of the land draft things that went with the three or four earlier requests. Um, and I, you know, I think that even though not bed with some of you um, <laughs> earlier uh, this uh, this week, you know, last weekend, uh, I think that you know, there's uh, want to see this community continue to work together despite our differences. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, any other business on the agenda from the board? No. Okay. Then we have. Uh, non public session for town manager annual evaluation. Do you have a formal motion? I will make a motion to enter non public session in accordance with RSA 91 A colon 3 Roman numeral 2 small a for town manager evaluation. And I'd like to do, a, I need to find a number for the other item. Um, what is it for? Um, uh, something that might adversely affect the uh, resignation. C. 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 Thank you. And small c. Do we have a second? Second. I believe we need a roll call vote yeah. to go in on public. Kate? Yes. 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 Okay. There's a few minutes.